everyone. Today is Saturday, the 3rd of July. I'm Kathleen. This is Kathleen's Trot and Trail. Coming to you at 10.30 at night, 10.20 at night. Um, my, my husband is out of town. He flew back to Virginia to drive um, with Ryan home. Ryan's coming home this weekend and moving, moving home, moving or moving back to Nebraska. I shouldn't say moving home, moving to his own home. Um, and so, uh, and Maddie's up at school and Caitlin's in Puerto Rico. And so I am just here all by my lonesome. And the last night I was in bed before nine and tonight I am wide awake and had planned to film a video tomorrow morning. And I decided, you know what the heck, um, let's just go ahead and film tonight. So the downside of that is my lighting is, <laughs> my lighting is really bad, um, but I'm just gonna go with it. I'm just gonna go with it. Um, I, I, yeah, we're just gonna try it. It's, for some reason, it's very yellow um, and I don't know, I don't know how to change that. This, for example, this wall is white, like almost, um, it, it's white, white. And so, but it's showing up even a little bit yellow and then that's kind of tan and it's showing up very yellow, but we're just going to go with it and try now. It's the 3rd of July. So fireworks are going off like crazy. And um, even though we live in a house with concrete walls and normally can't hear very much outside at all, um, tonight I am hearing some fireworks and the dogs are barking. So hopefully, um, and I will be able to edit this, but hopefully we won't have too many interruptions from the dogs, although maybe this, the cat will interrupt us quite a bit. I'm gonna try to get her down. This is Bitsy. I don't know if you've met her before. Um, she's usually sleeping during the day when I'm when I'm recording. So, um, how is everybody? It is, uh, things are great here. Just, i um, very excited for Ryan to move back. Um, we closed on his house. Um, now I'm going to yawn every five minutes. And, but, uh, we closed on his house. Oh, I don't know, a couple weeks ago. And, um, that was great except for the previous owners left it really, really, in bad shape um when we saw it um at the you know when we went to see it um to look at it the first time it was you know it was pretty pristine and in really really good shape and then you know we made the offer and we had the inspection and a couple weeks later and by the time of the inspection it was it was a little messy um and it made me a little bit worried and i did ask to have it professionally cleaned um, and then by the time we closed and went to our final walkthrough, which was 30 minutes before our closing, um, it was pretty obvious that they didn't have it professionally cleaned and that they had really, I mean, I don't want to say they had trashed it because there wasn't stuff in there. It was completely empty, but it was not clean at all. And, you know, I could have declined it and said no we're not going to close because it's dirty and you said you would have it professionally cleaned and you didn't but I just thought at that point no big deal I can clean it you know blah 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 and so Brian and I have spent the last couple weeks going up there several times um I'm gonna try not to yawn through this several times cleaning and weeding and uh, yeah um, anyway, it's in good shape now, and um, he'll be, he, they're going to come back tomorrow. They'll be back around 2 o'clock, and they're going to drive straight to the new house, and I'll meet them there, and we'll move him in. So it's very exciting. Um, okay, so I have a variety of things. There's really nothing else new um, on the horizon. The chickens are doing well. They're growing like crazy. Um, but the two new chickens are, they will be, they are six weeks now. And so, um, and so I can't believe I'm getting texts this late at night. My family knows I'm normally asleep by this point, but 
Um, I've been texting them, so they must figure that I'm awake. Um, uh, so they're doing great. They're going to move into the coop, I think, on Monday. So I have a couple of tips and suggestions on them and on how to kind of comfortably transition them into the coop with the big girls. And so we're going to try that on Monday. But I'm going to insert some pictures you of the big girls um, as um, – Kind of out and about we typically do not leave them out to free range um, at, uh, unless we're out there with them and so typically uh, they have a very large pen they have a, a decent sized coop and then a very large pen and um, so they kind of free range all day long but um, but I like them to be able to come out and truly free range um, for at least part of the day and so in the evening I usually go sit out there with them and um, and they free range and so I, I will insert some pictures. One of them you will see on my lap and on the table close to close to me. That's Edwina, um, named after Edwina from the movie Chicken Run, um, in honor of Edwina from the movie Chicken Run, and also in honor of my oldest sister. So that's my oldest sister's name. And um, she is the odd man out when it comes to chickens, and I think she thinks that she's human. And I am her very best friend. She loves me. She follows me. She hops up on my lap. She hops up on a chair next to me. If I'm sitting in a chair at the table, she'll hop up on the chair next to me. Um, she's always on her own where the other chickens kind of group together. She's always the last one um, to be part of the group. Um, they don't seem to be mean to her or treat her badly at all. In fact, if she's not with them, they'll, they'll call for her or they'll seem to look for her and kind of call for her. But um, she just, I don't think she thinks she's a chicken. <laughs> I don't know. At any rate, um, she is, I am her very best friend. And so she is with me a lot when um, they're out and about. And when I go into their pen, um, she comes running she's right there so it's a lot of fun I'm really enjoying them and I find them fascinating to watch and um, I th I can sit with them and watch them for hours I do not get bored watching them they are they are really fascinating creatures in the way that they move and you can kind of even a little bit different from a dog where you you don't always quite know what a dog is thinking um, you can kind of track their thought processes by the way they kind of look around and when they get scared and they kind of scatter and they run and they, or if they're very comfortable and they're just kind of, it, it, it's very, it's very fascinating, um, to watch them and they're funny and they have such personalities. I'm so surprised. I mean, I, yeah, I, it's, it, it's really quite surprising. So my eyes are watering now. I don't know. This may not work tonight. Okay. I have happy mail. I have FFOs. I have, um, whips and, um, I think that's about it. I have cross stitch and needlepoint today to show you. Um, my, oh, I guess one life update Our this isn't really a life update, but our, so we have two, um, heating and air conditioning systems in this house one for the main level of the house and one for the upstairs and we knew when we bought the house that the upstairs unit was quite old 25 years to be exact and pretty much on its last leg and they were like you know it's still running it's still working fine but it could last another five years or it could die tomorrow 
and tomorrow came on last Tuesday it died and my office and sewing room is upstairs and so currently we have no AC upstairs they came out they looked at it for several hours tried a few things and finally said we could try some more things but it is 25 years old and we said just go ahead and replace it and they said I said that thinking that that would be the quicker option considering it was like you know going to be 99 the next day and hot through the weekend and they said okay that's fine we can't get out here until the 14th of July to replace it so and plenty cool up there so um, now I don't know I think Monday is supposed to be 99 or 100 and so Tuesday morning we'll see if it's cool up there but um, I did buy an extra fan that room does have a fan but it's not very powerful like a ceiling fan but it's not very powerful and um, and so I did buy a fan and um, I can always bring my laptop downstairs and work downstairs it's you know but I could even bring my sewing machine downstairs and sew. but anyway so I haven't done any quilting because that's been upstairs okay let's do FFOs one that I forgot to show you that I finished man probably in May maybe um, I think this is called home is where my honey is and it's by the primitive hair and I don't have I don't have the cover sheet I mean it's put away because I finished this such a long time ago and of course there's a terrible glare and um, framed it myself I did lace it I put it in this frame I love this frame I think it's perfect for it it the original pattern said home is where my honey is down here and kind of neat funky lettering but I just I just I didn't want it to say that I just didn't I, I mean that expression is fine but I don't know I just I love this I think it's so pretty I used very little of the called for I just used what I had I wish I could get a better like non glary picture of it um, there probably needs to be something down here I made a mistake because I didn't want to put the words in I was thinking I should move I should have moved this up I think is what I should have done and I think I moved it down further I don't know so there really needs to be something down here I need to put some buttons or something but um, for now it's fine and I have some other little this is in my B cabinet and I have some other little things that kind of sit up against this down here so it's fine but anyway I really love that I love the colors and I think it's so yeah I think it's kind of I think it's pretty I do think it looks a little bit like they're fighting over the honey rather than <laughs> like here honey take this no you take it I don't know but it's it's neat it's cool this was harder to do than one would think I mean it's just all backstitch but it was a little bit that was a little bit challenging the little bees were not at all anyway that was fun. okay and then I have a whole well let me show you these first um, I was a little bit obsessed with the Priscilla and Chelsea seed packs that came out this spring um, but I didn't get any finished in the spring um, so the other day I FFO would I had this done and you saw it last time um, tomato seeds and what I did was I did do it like a pillow but I just put a little bit of crushed walnuts in there can you hear that so that when you shake it it kind of sounds like seeds are in there I thought about putting actual seeds in there but I think that opens you up to the possibility of getting mice having interested in mice trying to get to those seeds so anyway it's walnut shells uh, crushed walnut shells in there and then I finished which you didn't see strawberry seeds and on the back I put some lovely fabric don't know what this is but I think that's perfect for the little seed packets I would really like to do um, sunflower seeds and the sweet corn seeds um, but I haven't even started those so strawberries and tomatoes uh, my garden's doing well I finally have some tomatoes coming in I had my first cucumber and I have a ton of cucumber blooms 
I think my tomato blooms may be getting eaten. Um, I think I think I have 26 tomatoes planted and well I think I originally planted 26 tomatoes and I lost one something ate one um, half of them are planted inside of a gate and half of them are not but even the ones that are planted inside the gate um, they have blooms on them one day and the next day they don't I think it's deer. I think they're too tall for the bunnies to get to now, some of those blooms. So I think the deer might be getting inside the gate. So yeah, but I do have some blooms and I do have a few tomatoes and a ton of cucumbers, some peppers, squash are coming in um, and a ton of melons. So things are, things are happening. Um, okay, then I have a finish. This is um, Brooks Books. I can't remember what it's called. Something of the seasons or something. And there's one for every season. And I finish spring and autumn. And here is summer. And it's, oh, I know, it's like pants pantry seasons of the pantry or something like that so they're all like this as if it's a kind of a kitchen right so there's like two shelves this is on or maybe this is the kitchen table with the gingham tablecloth and then this is the shelf and they all have like a lace overlay here and then something on the shelf so it's pretty hard for you to see but it's basically on the bottom shelf is a watermelon with a bite taken out of it and a cup teacup a cherry and a little house like a little salt box house and then on the upper shelf is a cherry pie a jar of honey and a seashell and I finished this on one of the cute little um, platforms I don't remember who I got this from. I ordered it off of Etsy. I feel like I got it from Not Forgotten Farm, but I may have gotten it from someone else. And it was just perfect for that. And then I put some of the, what I put on the back of here in red is blue. The blue is here. And I love how that turned out. I cut the sticky board for the stitched piece too small. So I couldn't, pull the stitched piece around the board I would have lost some of the stitching so I folded it and ironed it and then glued it because I was out of sticky board and it, no chance to go to the store and get more order more I usually order it online and so it's not the best finish in the whole world but I still like it it's just propped up on um, a shelf in the kitchen and then I, I had talked I had mentioned this before and I brought I didn't bring all of them over here but I've been doing the Lori Holt stitch card little pillows and I did a bunch for spring and I lined them up in my bathroom and I thought they looked so cute that I was like well now I have to do a bunch for summer and I'm already thinking I'm gonna need to do a bunch for fall so for spring I did and these were the ones that were lined up in the bathroom, the little tulips, and I did them on different counts of fabric, so they're all different sizes. I mean, they're all very tiny, but um, that really looks like a cone flower to me, but, and I messed something up here with the border, so I just winged it and like did a funky border. And then um, the little chick, which I thought was so Oh, cute oh my gosh I love that so much so these were all in my bathroom I finished these all with wool and lace on the back and put the seam you know in the middle of the back and they're filled with these are all filled with wool roving then I also did in a on a larger can I think this is on a 25 count for my bee cabinet this little bumblebee when I was stuffing this I um, 
stuck my, I use a, either a knitting needle or a um, chopstick um, to get my corners pushed out and I stuck it right through the stitched part because this is a very loose wool weave. So I just put two, kind of stitched two um, buttons up there. But that is, yeah, that one, I it's one of my favorites. That one turned out really cute. And you can see, like, how much bigger that is than, like, I mean, they're the same size. I think they're 24 by 24, but just the difference between doing them on, this is probably, like, 36, and this is 25, or this might be 32 and 25 or something. But And then um, another one in that same fabric and then this I used oh a B fabric on the back and a little piece of wool and a big button and that turned out like so cute and then this is um, a little watering can and I just realized I must have pulled my thread from my button all the way through to the top and <laughs> it's a little bit indented there but anyway little watering can and a flower and then I also put the button up here and then I did three for the summer I there I have a few more in different places around the house I have a really cute one I'll try to take a picture of it if I think about it but it's in a little I have a little miniature cloche it's teensy teensy and I got it for free through some I don't know like it was like a mystery book club or something and you would get a book and then you would get little items that went with the mystery of the book I don't know it was really different and um and this little cloche came I don't even remember what it had to do with the book but anyway I'm always looking for cute things to put in it I keep it up by the kitchen sink and um I did a little a little bee and it's in there with a little one of um the little uh waxed um it's like a waxed strawberry and it, oh my gosh, it looks so cute up there. I'll try to take a picture. Um, Um, so anyway, for summer, I did a watermelon and a fork. I did a little house. And I had these pins in the spring ones, and then I took them out and put them in the summer ones. So these are in my bathroom right now. What a well, watermelon has to do with the bathroom, I don't know, but they look cute up there. And then a I love this little camper. For some reason, I must have stitched, I don't know if you can see but you can really see oh yeah you can see when it's sitting up on the shelf i stitched this crooked like when i stitched the pillow together <laughs> so it's like these i stuffed they have wool roving in the corners and um crushed walnut shelves in the in the middle i like that heft it gives them so and then i also did the seams on the back and did not put I did these um, the day after the air conditioning went out and it was getting really hot in my office. So I thought I would add the lace and the buttons later. Um, okay, so those were really fun. And then I wanna show you, I was gifted, so I had, my birthday was in, was in June and um, I, it was, a wonderful birthday uh, the biggest thing was that Maddie came down and surprised me I think I filmed right after my birthday so you knew that um, Maddie came down and surprised me and it was really fun and just awesome and great and um, but then I got I kept getting like gifts after the fact and it, it was just so sweet so for my sweet friend Nicole Buckeye Stitcher she sent me and this is for somebody like me that who loves books and Nicole and I talk about books a lot and um, are both big readers and um, she sent me books like from like a book um like a 
a book gift club kind of thing. And so she sent me a book of poems. I've already put them away, and um, I've started one of them. And then a book about, I think it's about a, um, I haven't started this one yet. It's about a um, roving libra library. And um, so anyway, really, that was just super cool. And they came wrapped, and it was it was really neat. And then I'm going to kind of go backwards um, from there because I'm going to have to t take a break and go get something. But um, um, then I got the sweetest gift, gifts from my friend Angie, who's Bub Mai on Vostube, and um, two stitched pieces. And I, I was like, two? Two stitched pieces? Oh, my goodness. And so, and they're both bees. And I, oh, they're just so, oh, my goodness. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Um, last year for my birthday, and I don't even know if I showed, she sent me this huge Snoopy pillow with Snoopy that she stitched. And it's big. It's, like, huge. And I have it up all year round. It's up in my office. And I, uh, every morning when I turn on the light in my office, I see Snoopy and you know, I love all things Charlie Brown, peanuts. Um, and so this has the greatest fabric on the back. I think this is from the same line of fabric that this is from, because I think I have some of this fabric. But isn't that perfect? And then, what, oh, and it's the same. Well, no, it's not. It's similar, but different. Huh, I didn't even notice that. So she sent this beautiful little kind of miniature black um, I, is it called a tiered tray if there's just one tier? What would that, just a tray? And it's black and it's about this big. And these sit in there perfectly in my bee cabinet. Oh my gosh, it's perfect. And it's black, so I mean, it's just perfect. Anyway, okay, I, so I had a couple other really amazing things. So hold tight, I'm gonna go get those. Okay, so my friend Dory sent a whole box of just awesome stuff not the least of which was some lotion some hand lotion that I hope I can find again because it's awesome um she sent me two stitched pieces and one of them I have out and I've moved it like six times because it's actually a fall piece um, but I'm like, I'm leaving it out. I don't care. I'm not putting it away. And I can't remember where I moved it to the last time. But it is, oh, it's so cool. It's like an owl, almost like an owl sitting on a spool. But she stitched a band around the spool, and it's a band of pumpkins. And it's like that big. Like the spool is like that big with pumpkins stitched around them, almost like a drum, like you would do a drum. It is, it's kill. I even showed, I showed that to Brian and he was like, wow. I mean, he was just like, oh my gosh, that's amazing. My, I don't know what my hair is doing. It's flipping out. But, you know, I have this huge affinity for Peter Rabbit. And she sent me this. She stitched Peter Rabbit. Oh my gosh, he's so cool. Look at that, and look at the frame. And uh, this will never get put away either. Um, and then yesterday I was kind of having a rough day. A little bit. I'm not terrible. Just just a long day, a lot of work, a lot of you know, tired. Blah blah blah. And I was expecting some things from Amazon, and so a delivery came, and the, but there was an, a, an extra box, and I couldn't figure out, and it was, you know, it wasn't a big box, but I couldn't quite figure out who it was from. And so I opened it up, and inside was this gorgeous card. This might give you a hint. And on the back was this. Do you know who this is from? Miss Daylene. So grateful. And I love this. Her, she wrote the sweet card, wrote the sweet note inside. But at the bottom of it, she said, so grateful we are in the same stitching circle. S-E-W. So grateful. I thought that was 
But what a cool card. A little bit of washi tape and picture of her stitch piece. Oh, really cool. <clears throat> but inside, and I left this all because I opened it and I looked at everything and then I'm like, oh, I'm going to leave it all in here so I can show you. So let's see. First of all, everything is wrapped. So this was wrapped. I'm not going to show you the front of it yet. This was like this. Teresa Kogan Angel. And there's some of that, you know, I don't know what that is, but fluff that you put in things. Wrapped in this with two ribbons around it. And it was so, I mean, it was just, just too bright, pretty, you know. And I thought, oh, okay, that's really cool. That, I mean, just that extra touch of two ribbons, like that's, you know, I just, you get the best ideas from people. I'm taking a long pause because I'm trying not to tear up. Look at the back. And there's little sticky notes in there. Is that not, is that not just? I don't even know what to say. A button I love these are my favorite buttons in the whole world these little are they shell buttons can you see it and then a little heart it probably says something made with love sorry ribbon I just mm. Mm. okay now I can put that out then a floss, beautiful floss ring Butterfly, more washi tape. Oh no, that's not washi tape. Oh, that might be something different. Oh, it's a it's a bookmark. It's a magnetic bookmark. Ugh. I mean the presentation. I just I can't. There just are no words. I mean, Teresa Public Angel card. Live in gratitude, for gratitude is the ultimate state of receivership. Okay. And then, that's not all. This is called splurge. And I said, I told her, I explained to her how, um, when I texted her to thank her, how I have pretty soaps that I buy and that my husband knows to keep his grubby hands off of them and they're for display only. And I have the little part of our little powder room downstairs. I mean, I have the hand soap next to the sink, but then I have like a little dish where I put the pretty soap and that this would go in that dish. And she's like, no, 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 use it. I'll make more. So she made the soap. What do you call that? Do you dip soap? Do you... What do you call that when you make soap? I feel like there's a name for that. It smells really good. And that sponge. Oh. Anyway, I felt really, really honored that I... There's just something about getting somebody stitching and that they have taken the time to stitch something for you. And, you know, because whether it's a quick stitch or not a quick stitch it's it's a part of our lives right it's a section of our time that we use for that person that we don't get back right it's you know it's time that we could be used making ornaments for our family or you know, in Daylene's case for her grandchildren or in Dory's case for her mom or in Nicole's, you know, whatever. I mean, it's just, it's a, I don't know. I, there are no words. I'm trying to find words, but there are none. Okay. Let's move on because I'm not doing a very good job of 
explaining that at all. I am so grateful. I'm so grateful for this community and for the friendships that I think about this all the time. Like, you know, I have a friend in North Carolina. I have a friend in Ohio. I have a friend in New York, a friend in, you know, Mississippi, a couple friends in Mississippi. I mean, I have friends in places where I would have never had an opportunity to meet these people had it not been for floss tube and and friends across the pond and, you know, that I haven't actually even met in person, but yet they're dear to me. It's, it's pretty cool. Okay, let's do whips and then I'm going to let you go because I'm now I'm just starting to blather, which apparently is what happens at night when I film at now 11 o'clock at night. Um, okay, opening gam opening gambit. I have no idea how this thread got in here because this is a monochromatic piece and I'm using gold. Um, by the way, I'm using um, the DMC 729 is the color. I had a page finish, which is, I know, a miracle. This is Long Dog Sampler. Oh, um, speaking of Long Dog, I was talking to Jenny, Long Dog Stitcher, the other day and um, she is doing a quilt and a hand piece, English paper piece and quilt. And she's asking for, she's kind of put the call out for scraps from Flosstube and Instagram and, you know, whatever friends. And um, so if you have two by two or bigger scraps of fabric that you can send to her so that she can, you know, put add that to her quilt and um, kind of remember all of her friends you know stitching friends um go go check out i think her last video she talks about it um but anyway and she has some phenomenal finishes as well um anyway this is uh my light's gonna be really bad and i didn't iron um this is opening gambit long dog sampler it's a nine page chart um, it's all things opening gambit is a move in chess and my son Ryan is super into chess and um, I am stitching this for him he hasn't seen it but he did pick the colors out um, I, t I said if I was going to do something for you on this fabric what color would you want it to be and he said gold and so we chose this as the 729 is gold you can't see it the light my lighting is so bad but um, 729, I had, I had a couple, um, I had one skein of 729 in my stash. I had Brian pick up a whole bunch at Walmart when he went to the grocery store, like the week after I started this. He bought the last four, and then I bought more at Hobby Lobby. You can't see it, but they're clearly different dye lots, and... It is a different color. You can kind of see it a little bit. This section right in here is a different color. It's lighter. I'm leaving it. I, I think it looks cool and it adds a little bit of interest. It's funky, but I'm gonna leave it and I'm gonna use that skein. I think it's just the one skein, maybe two. I'm gonna use it in other places so that that, yeah. Um, it, this is really fun and really hard to put down. I have, I thought this was a dragon um, because I had my, I was doing it in Notes Pro and I had my page blown up and so I was only seeing the head and I thought it was a dragon. It's actually a two hump camel, which I know has a name but I can't think of what it's, probably dye something. Um, so that's a camel. There's a really cool elephant right here. There is a mistake. Um, up here in the castle I am one row too long right here you can see it you can see how this window here is different than this window over here um, I'm just gonna leave it but I've had to adjust all the way down because it made everything you know one stitch further out but that's okay um, I, it's so much fun to do so that's one page um, there are nine pages the ninth page is in a full page so I wish you could see it better it's 
it really is gorgeous and it's really much more brilliant on that fabric than it's showing up with this light so uh, his birthday's in September, but my goal, I think, at this point is to get it done for him for Christmas and give it to him at Christmas framed. Um, and then today, and I told you I wasn't going to let this happen this time, but I, uh, maybe I can find it here really quick. I, um, a couple weeks ago, no, last week sometime, I found a new designer that I'd never heard of before, probably from watching Floss Tube. And, um, oh no, this, yeah, that's true. I did find a new designer, but that's not what this is. I was watching Pam and Steph and they were talking about Twin Peak Primitives and the latest chart, um, was this the chart that was on sale and I fell in love with it and thought how perfect for the 4th of July coming up. And it is a patriotic Christmas Eve. Oh boy, that's not good. And it looks like this, you've probably seen it. Talk about washed out. I love that, I loved it. I immediately ordered it, got it online. And I thought today would be a fun day to start it. And so I did and here is, gosh, I'm like a needle, like literally sticking through the stitch, like sticking up through the fabric. But let me figure out how this is oriented. I started in the bottom right-hand corner, and I know everything is backwards for you guys. I'll have to figure out how to fix that. But this is the beginning of the border. The only thing I've changed, well, I've actually ended up changing quite a bit because I did not have... Um, several of the skeins that I needed surprisingly but I was going to show you one thing that I changed even though I had it was the red in the flag so the red in the flag calls for 349 DMC 349 which is this which is very very orange and I put a row in and thought I, that cannot be the red in my American flag it doesn't look like that on the picture so I don't know if it's just my skein of 349 so I changed it to DMC 3777 which is kind of a, just a I don't know primitive rusty red and I really really like that um, this vine down here of the border was in a brown and I changed that to green so it's kind of a combination of mine. And I'm doing this on a piece of um, Ada, Ugh, I didn't put it in here, that I ordered from Misty Purcell. And it's really, really nice. It's really, really fun. Really, really nice Ada. Okay, what's this? This is done on a piece of linen. It's milk chocolate, 32 count. <laughs> I must have gotten this from the Fat Quarter Shop. Um, this is, you've seen this before, this is the Alleluia. This is the Nativity by Croset Agogo, if I'm saying that correctly. And what I got last time you saw it, I had Mary. I think I had Mary mostly done. I still need to add, she has some white stitches here in her robe. I might do beads. I might do beads just to make her a little bit more. I'm sure Mary didn't wear beads, but in real life, but just, I don't know. Um, but anyway, this is Mary. I think I had Mary in the cow or oxen. Is there a difference between an oxen and a cow? I'm going to have to look that up. Um, I got the donkey done, and then I got Joseph started. And I had a lot more done on Joseph, and I realized that his face was wrong. I was off by a stitch, so I had to take it out and re-stitch re his face. Um, hopefully it's right now. But anyway, this is a really, this is a really fun stitch. Also kind of hard to put down. So I am doing kind of a version of Jolly July. I'm just, I'm going to try, other than Ryan's, I'm going to try to only do Christmas. Might do some ornaments. Might do some big projects. Might do some little projects. Um, but I'm just going to do Christmas. We'll see if that holds. Um, to all a good night, Priscilla and Chelsea. 
the Real Housewives of Cross Stitch. And I'm doing this on a piece of, I think this is not called black, it's called like, um, might be like blackboard linen. Uh, this might also be from 123 Stitch, and it's very see through. Let's see. But it is very easy to stitch on. I realized that I started in the middle on this, and I realized that I started stitching the wrong house. So it is two blue houses in the middle and two white houses on the ends, and I started stitching a white house here. But that's okay, I'll just do the two white houses and the two blue houses. So, anyway, that's a fun stitch also. Fun and, you know, easy and just, like, no stress, no... Like, not that any of these are high stress, but I, I, I will say that, like, the Queen's Gambit is a little bit more stress. Or it's not the Queen's Gambit, it's Opening Gambit, which is, I guess, the same thing, but... Um, just because like I'm off by a stitch, if I'm off by a stitch in that, it's probably not gonna make a huge difference. But I'm, if you're off by a stitch on a nine page chart, like that impacts you all the way down. So it's a little bit, you know, I don't know. And then it was so funny. I saw this online. I went online to look for something else and I like to Amazon. And you know how when you look at something on Amazon, it says, and you may also like, and it gives you five other options of things you may also like. And I saw this and I thought, oh my gosh, it's so cute. And um, it's not really cute, it's just kind of wonderful. But um, then, and I'd never seen it before and didn't think anything about it. And then I was watching um, Lancaster, how do you say that, Lancashire, Lancaster? Lancaster Stitcher who's in Lancaster England and she's working on this and I thought well that's so wild because so anyway it's um no I think hers is a little different because hers says believe at the top but it's a Jim Shore Mill Hill Santa and anyway this is neat it but I will say this it must be 18 count linen and it's a little it's a little bit hard to stitch on it's not so much hard to see the holes. It's just, it seems a little bit, you're supposed to use two strands and it seems a little bit tight. I don't even know if that's the right side. That's his, I started in the middle. That's his sleeve. It probably goes like this. Um, I, the, you know, the Mill Hill kits always come with a needle and a, a stitching needle and a beading needle. And I had to switch out the stitching needle because the one they sent was huge and it was just way too big. I would really, 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 really like to get a lot of progress made on Kringles. And I worked on it yesterday, a good portion of the day. And I got some progress. I started in the middle also. And last time you saw it, I had, I think I had the first block done. And just a little bit of a start on the second block. I'm so sorry about the light. And so I finished the second block and I outlined that and started in on the Kringles and got the snowflake in. Um, finished up this outlining. Also a very, very, very fun stitch. You know, every little, it's one of those things where every little thing you do is kind of a mini finish. Like, okay, I did that giant snowflake. That was a finish. I did, oh, I just realized I didn't, I forgot to put the bow on that present. And I forgot to finish this tree over here. So that block isn't done, but close. The little dog is so cute. Anyway, little house, you know, little house is just a joy. Just a joy. Lots of fun to stitch. Okay, that's it for cross stitch. I have worked on a few other things, but really nothing of any great, like, haven't gotten a lot done. I got this book. I usually am not a big Emma Congdon. It's just usually not my cup of tea. Um, words. I used to be really into words, like words all over the house, and I just outgrew that for whatever reason. 
but somebody was showing this book and it's got a lot of really really good things in it and I thought for gifts like a lot of stuff for gifts so it's um, cross stitch for the soul and in particular um, there's a couple of really thing things that I really thought would be good for um, you know like start each day with a grateful heart um, be not afraid of going slowly be afraid only of standing still um, bloom where you are planted um, I mean there's just some really there's a really good one about the mountains that reminds me of Colorado believe in yourself you know just um, where is the one oh this would be I this would be really fun to make for like your spouse or your partner a good companion shortens the longest road I like that there is one hair that I really thought of making for Maddie for Christmas oh I like this one always be yourself because the people that matter don't mind and the people the ones that mind don't matter that's a good one. Oh, this one the best view comes after the hardest climb I love that so anyway there's some really good things in there I don't know when I will ever get to them but I will at some point um, I was on the side of town the other day for I was um, a friend my friend Gail has a new grandbaby and I got to go see him and meet him his name is Jeremiah he's so cute oh my gosh um, but anyway they live not far from the needlepoint store and so I thought oh afterwards I'll go to the needlepoint store wasn't really in the mood to, or not in the mood but I wasn't really thinking I was gonna buy anything but you know me honestly I think I walk in and they're like oh Kathleen's here um, and a lot of times they're having a trunk show and I and they did have some things out and I'm like are you guys having a trunk show and they're like no uh -uh. we were just you know playing with some stuff and got some stuff out this was not out um, but this was actually hanging high up on the wall she had to get the ladder to get it down um, and this is a great car project this is a birds of a feather and I'm like oh wow are birds of the feathers do they still have like new needlepoint canvases and they're like yeah and so I had to get that I thought that was so and it's a little girl I thought she's so cute so I don't know if you can tell but um we went up to David City the other day where Ryan's going to be living to work on his house and Brian drove and so I got like her mouth her nose and one of her eyes done and the, oh, the the flosses are just you know just lush. But then, then oh, and I got the bag because they had these great bags. Fat Quarter Shop has some of these bags too, and you can actually do needlepoint on them. This one's a little bit bigger because this project's a little bit bigger inside. This, I saw this and I just, hmm. it is so beautiful. So look at this. How pretty is that and how unique and, you know, I love it because I'm pretty much a traditionalist when it comes to Christmas, but I feel like it'll go like it's it'll go isn't that gorgeous and so on this one I worked a little bit on this tree up here because they had some new threads oh that's that was kind of why I stopped in there she had put a note on Facebook about um, some new silks that she had in and so the whole thing isn't color planned in these but a good portion of it is they're silk road fibers and it's called straw silk and it's yeah that's what it looks like and I was like oh I don't know and they were like oh we've all stitched in it it's it's awesome and it is it's very easy it once you start stitching it softens up and it's not it's not hard it's not rough it doesn't I was like I think that's gonna break but no it's lovely 
so straw silk yeah and it looks really neat so I have most of it in this but like and then I have some pretty um, silk lame oh look at that what is rainbow gallery I was trying to think of it. and then this is my favorite silk and ivory that's my favorite thing to do need a point with but so this will be yeah might work on that a little bit tonight um anyway that is kind of everything it's a lot this is like forever long video and half the time I just blabbered um I'm gonna try to come back in a week because when I wait this long I it's just too much stuff and too much to tell you but we'll see if I you know I I would like to say oh in a week I won't be very busy but you know how that is and it never ends up being that way um, I hope everyone is getting some time to stitch this weekend. I hope it's, oh, can you hear the babies? The babies are chirping. They're still in the house until Monday. Monday they'll go out and they'll be with the rest of the flock. But they're almost completely feathered out. Um, but they're not supposed to be out in the flock until they're either six weeks, at least six weeks, and the temperature is above 60 degrees as a low. And, and it, that is not a problem. But they're they'll be six weeks on on Monday so um but yeah every once in a while at night they I mean they're very chirpy during the day but every once in a while at night they um something wakes them up and it's probably the fireworks I don't know if you can hear them but I can still hear a little bit of fireworks going off so um but yeah so once we get Ryan moved in I feel like things will calm down a little bit and then we actually have my mother-in-law's funeral you know she passed away last um November but um, we couldn't have the funeral because of COVID. And so um, we're actually going to have our funeral in Colorado um, uh, at the end of July. And so we'll, we have that. And then in August, at some point, we don't have our reservations made, but we're going to go to Puerto Rico. Probably just Brian and I. Maybe Maddie will go with us. Probably not Ryan. Um, and then we'll have Thanksgiving here. And my brother and sister-in-law and their girls will come. And then we're, the plan is all four of us will go to Puerto Rico um, for Christmas. So that's kind of our tentative, tentative plans right now. And then Brian has always told the kids that when Maddie, the youngest, turned 21, he, we would do a family vacation to Las Vegas. So not my cup of tea. Like, I could care less about going to Las Vegas. However, as I told him, get a nice hotel and then I can just sit and stitch and you guys can go to whatever um well Maddie turned 21 in January and um yeah we still have it you know because of COVID and everything and then so we're trying to also figure out when we're going to do that because the kids all really really want to go to Las Vegas and you know they want to like go to Las Vegas and lay out at the pool and I'm like I will not be laying out at the pool like no that's not my cup of tea. I get plenty of sun outside working in the garden and watering the flowers. And, uh, yeah, I'm not going to lay out at the pool. Um, but you know, I, I mean, it's, it could still be fun and it would be fun to see some shows and, you know, I would stick a quarter in a slot machine, I guess. And I don't know. I, that's just not, yeah, not my cup of tea, but anyway so there will be some things coming up but all good stuff hopefully and you know yeah so all right guys i'm gonna let you go have a great day happy fourth of july talk to you soon bye